been come back in the House of Lords at any point. Uh, I like to say that because it is. Uh, I can't think of any place else I could have been in the House of Lords. Uh, a lot of people have chosen other places to go this day and to uh, uh, please the flesh. And, uh, and, uh, a, lot of, a lot of men are in church pleasing the flesh. Right. And uh, we need to be more more in the will of the Lord and uh, and try to live closer to Him and read His Word and understand His Word. We want to study this morning a little bit in the book of Joel, in the first chapter, verse 1, is where we'll, we'll start our reading. Joel 1.1. 1, 1. Today to get our attention, Amen. And people, if you haven't haven't thought about it, uh, he's using things today, Amen. And he's turning the world upside down, and uh, uh, he's he's capable of doing that, Amen. And, uh, uh, he shakes he shakes us sometimes, and so here in the word of Joel in verse one of chapter one. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Bethuel, Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Now he's talking about something that's, that's very unusual, something that has happened uh, back in Egypt's time when they had the plagues and all of these things. And uh, he uses he uses these things, like I've already said, he uses things to get the attention of his children Amen. and of those that may be his children and of those that will never be his children. Mm -hmm. And he gets, he gets, he, he's got a way of getting their attention. And so he says here that he's talking to this old man or to the elderly. Uh, they are the ones back then that had more power to express things that were going on. And, and, and one of the things I'm sure that a lot of them says, I ain't never seen nothing like this before. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, uh, there's things that's coming in, in view right now with me, I ain't never seen before. Right. And listen, the Lord, if the Lord is in control of it, the Lord has all oh, he's 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 letting it happen and he's got all the control of it and listen he knows just exactly where it's going to be who it's going to affect and what is going to happen but here we see this that judah had judah had fell by the wayside and that they weren't obeying the lord and he says here in verse three he says tell ye your children of it let your children tell their children and their children and another generation. And you know, you remember that in the scriptures, the Bible is, tells us about uh, to the uh, effect in the, the father's sins will affect the children to the second and third and maybe fourth generation. This is why he's saying, you tell your children about Amen. this. Because, listen, they, they need to hear it, whether or not they'll believe it, whether or not they'll, they'll use it for their own benefit as to serve you or not. That's up to them, and that's but you tell them, and that's the same thing this morning that we as as a as a Bible school or Bible study, we have to tell others about what we have studied this week and and and, and how that they can uh, uh, understand and know what's going on in this world. Because here, this is something here this morning that 
Uh, you notice what he says here about this. That which the pommel worm hath left hath the, hath the locust eaten. Now listen, he tells us about four different stages of this locust. And the locust has a, uh, a, 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 a small worm that eats some, and then they learn how to fly, and then they learn how to do this and do that. And there's four different stages of it. And you know, when the, when the locusts and all came into Egypt and all that, uh, it just tore up Jack. And so here, notice here, he says, that which the pommel worm has left behind, and this is a form of locust. The locust eateth, and that which the locust has left behind, Hath, hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left hath the, the caterpillar eaten. Amen. So here is a stage where that they, that they come into their land and they started eating on these things, and we'll see just a little bit here about how they did the vineyards, how they did the trees, how they did everything. They completely destroyed. And this, this morning, is God's doing. And people, this morning, we serve this God Amen. that is able to do these things. And this morning, we should set our mind on one thing, and that is to serve our God. Amen. And that we need to we need to be in this Word. We need to pray and ask God to give us the, the meaning of the things. And pray for the Holy Spirit to give us that comfort that Amen. we need while we're studying. Because listen, it's here. And we, as God's people, need to know it and understand it and live by it, that when these things come, and they will come even on the just, mm -hmm. you will be ready to understand who's in control. Right. And you can, you, can, you can have this assurance, hey, listen, if it's my time to go, if it's my time to suffer, whatever be the case, listen, I'm ready. And I've mm -hmm. served the Lord, and He knows what's best for me. And, and listen, people, He knows what's best for me. He knows when I need to be, be taken out. He knows how, how long I need to be left here. And listen, I, I praise Him and ask Him for leadership in, in my life to, to help me to do the things that would be pleasing to Him. So notice here, as He, as he uh, talks here about these things, He says, Awake, ye drunkards, and weep, and how all ye drinkers of wine. Now listen, because the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. And so these, these gnawing creatures, these locusts, has already destroyed the new vines, and there's no new grape, there's no new, new wine here, and all it, and he says here is, is, is they can drink just what's left in the, in the uh, containers, and that's it. He says, in, in verse 6, for a nation is come upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vines waste and barked my fig trees. Now, people, these little things are doing this to this country, and <clears throat> and I can tell you a, a little something that's that probably is more unbelievable than this, and that is these little germs that are flying around all over the world and the United States and all the countries are scared to death about it, and they don't know why they're scared because. Everybody says, hey, we can overdo this. We'll have a, 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 a something to take care of this. But listen, they're scared to death. Right. And hey, it's a good thing because somebody needs to be scared. Our country is in a bad shape. Mm -hmm. And even, even as the Republican Party and the Democratic Party got together and they tried to uh, yell, yell about this and impeach our president. Listen, it was all uh, it was all uncalled for, and it's not pleasing to the Lord for a country that He is blessed to get in a condition like they are. And so, what does He do? Well, He says, "Hey, wake up, wake up!" Mm -hmm. And the first thing you know, here comes something through and hits Nashville over here, and it tears it tears millions and millions of dollars worth. And listen, uh, I know there was people in there that was, 
probably say that was serving the Lord that got uh, involved in that. But hey, the Lord is in charge of this thing. Amen. And he knows what He knows what it takes to wake us up and shake us a little bit because hey, we're in serious trouble. Amen. Our country's in serious trouble. And we need to be shaken. We need to be wakened up. And we need to let us see what the Lord can do for us. So he said here, he, he, in verse 7, He had laid my waste, my vine waste, and barked my trees. He had made it clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are, are made white. And so this is the condition that, that, that he's left them in. Now I want to, I want to turn, if I can, uh, read just a little bit this morning in the book of, of uh, Deuteronomy. If I can find it real easy. I had it marked, I think. Deuteronomy 15, I believe where it's at. Yeah. Um, Deuteronomy 28. Sorry. Deuteronomy 28. And verse 15. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass if those will not hearken, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall be in the cities, cursed shall be thou in the fields, Cursed shall thou be in thy baskets and thy store. Thy, your food, your eating, what you have, it's going to be everywhere. And I mean, he's warning the people. He's warning us today. He's warning, he had warned in the past, and he's warning for the future. He is in charge. Amen. And he can do these things. And listen, he doesn't have to do anything but say he speaks to a churn. He speaks to a locust. He Amen. speaks to a bird. He says, go there, do that, and he sits back. Mm -hmm. And listen, if the people don't want to hear it, if the people don't want to understand it, then they'll have to suffer for it. Right. So here he says, here in verse 18, listen, cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, children, and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind or cattle, and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall be thou when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Lord, the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, rebuke, and all that thou sittest thy hand unto to do, until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doing whereby thou hast forsaken me and we we look at people today and and you know even even uh, today uh, up here where all the storm and all the tour permit everybody's up there running and trying to help and doing this and people are just, oh they're the goodest they're the best people they're the goodest people but listen they are fleshly good in, in, in that they try to do stuff. But listen, they're still disobeying God. They're still in sin. They're still putting their approval upon this abortion. They're still putting their approval upon sin of all kinds. And God is tired of it. God is through with it. And he's going he's to slow us up. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to read that to you. Now, I wanted to say something to you this morning about this vexation. And I, I looked it up and the woman... It's an irritating or a disturbing in the mind, uneasiness and afflictions. That's vexation. And you know, when you have uneasiness in mind, when you have afflictions in your life and things of this nature, it has a tendency to get your attention. Mm -hmm. And so that's why God gets it, get, gets your attention. And so if things are if things are kind of sliding around in your life and you're kind of slipping here and slipping there, listen. These things can come upon us, mm -hmm. and uh, we need we need to just kind of straighten up and fly right and and get back in the will of the Lord. And Amen. So forth, thou will be gone. So here, back in our lesson in Joel, he said here in verse eight, "Lament ye bird like a virgin, girt with sackcloth, for the husband of her youth. The meat offerings and the drink offerings is cut off from the house of the Lord." The priest, the Lord's ministry, 
borns, the field is wasted, the land mourneth, for the corn is wasted, and the new wine is dried up, the oil languish. And so he's, 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 he's taking care of everything, he's, he's doing this, and he says, Be ye ashamed, O ye little husbandmen, how, O ye wine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished, the wine is dried up, and the trees, the fig trees languish, the pomegranates, the palm trees, also the apple trees, even all the trees of the field are withered, because joy is withered away from the songs of men. And so men singing songs have no joy, nothing like this, but he says, this is what you do. Girt yourself and my man, you priests, how are you ministers and the altars? Come lie all night in sackcloth, you ministers of my God, for the meat offering and for the drink offering is withholding from the house of your Lord. Sanctify, set apart, ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord, your God, and cry unto the Lord, Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. It is not the meat cut off, it is not the meat cut off before your eyes, yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. Mm -hmm. And so here's the here's the thing, here's the thing that that kind of gets the Christians sort of back in line. The joy and the happiness is cut off mm -hmm. from the house of the Lord, and, and it's cut off. And it's it's sad. I'm gonna tell you what. It's sad when a church can come together and once had joy and peace and fellowship and all this, and they go in and they sit there, sing a song, and the preacher gets up and tells them how good they are, and that's it. Mm. Listen, the joy is gone. Mm. The peace is gone. There's no happiness there. You can't leave this a building when, and, and go home and, and, and praise the Lord and say, oh, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord when, when things are like this. And that's what he's saying he'll do. He takes the joy and the peace from, from, from the church and from, from the people. Now, I want, to, I want to get over just a little bit more before my time runs out. But anyway, I want to read something to you in Joshua. Uh, as he warns Israel, Joshua in uh, verse 23. Joshua 23, and this is when Moses had died. Joshua was fixing to die. And they had uh, they had went in, and, and the Lord had blessed them, and there was there was peace there, and there was comfort there. But Joel, uh, in verse one, we'll read a few verses here, and it came to pass. And, Joel 20, I mean in Joshua 23, it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies and are round about that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. And Joshua called for all his Israel and for their elders and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. And ye have been seen all that the Lord your God had done to all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Now look in verse 15. After he got through telling them this, he said, For therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until he hath destroyed you from off this own good land which the Lord your God hath given you. When ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God which has commanded you and have gone and served other gods and bowed yourself to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're reading this morning in Joel. This is the things that happened in Israel Israel had it made. Mm -hmm. uh, Israel did, they was at peace, and uh, Joshua had said, battle all these countries and had peace there. But he, he said, and, and Moses told him the same thing back in his time. He said, I know you're going to do it because you're, you're, just, you're just in it. And he, when, he went up on the, when he went up to get the, the commandments, 
he come back down and was dancing around this keg. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and he said, he said, I know you're going to do it. And Joshua said the same thing, and they did it. They did it. Listen, people, they did it, and they and they were taken over by country, by country, by country. And listen, it wasn't until 1948 when they became a nation again. And the Lord is blessing them now, but listen, there's there's trouble on the way for them too, if, 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 if you know. And so this morning, this is some of the things that I've seen here as I was reading in the in the book of Joel. So he says after that, back in, in Joel, turn back to uh, chapter one in the book of Joel, we'll read a little bit more. We'll read this a little bit more. And in the in the uh, uh, I sanctified, I never read that. So he says uh, in the 17, uh, telling about our 16, it is not the meat cut off before your eye, our eyes, ye joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is rotten under the clod, the garners or the, or the stored storehouse are laid desolate, the barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan, the herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pastures? Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flames have devoured, have burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry also unto thee, for the rivers of water are dried up, and the fire had devoured the pastures of the wilderness. And so they, they had a terrible, terrible time here. And if you would, I would that you would turn with me to the book of Revelations, chapter 9. I want to read you something else here before we get through. Revelations 9. Revelations in chapter 9 and verse 8, I believe it is. Uh, no, I mean, okay. it's an angel in eight, maybe it's an eight. Mm -hmm. Bear with me just a minute. Uh, they won't interfere with me here just a little bit. Here it is, and yeah, it's chapter nine and verse eight. Uh, it tells about this angel, and he is, uh, uh Casting out all these things. Uh, look, let's look a little bit earlier uh, in, in, in 9 and verse 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass. And he's talking about this angel sounding the, uh, uh, the sound. And a star fell from heaven uh, unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pits. Now, and he opened, well, we see this coming out of the pit, I'm going to read it anyway, and he opened the bottom of the pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as a, the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air was darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass, of the earth, neither any green th thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as a torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in, <clears throat> and in those days, Shall man seek death, and shall not find it? And shall a desire to die, and death shall flee from them? And the shape of the locusts were like the unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as were crowns of like gold, and their faces were the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of a woman. Now, <clears throat> that sounds something alarming. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots, as many horses running 
to battle. And, and I've heard these locals back in the uh, uh, years and years going past when they would come over, they'd make the office roar and sound the whole thing of them. And I don't know if, uh, if he's ta talking about an actual locals here or if it's some other thing, but anyway, this sound is here. And notice in verse 10, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and the, their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is, in the Hebrew tongue, Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollo. And these two names mean destruction and destroyer. One woe is past, and behold, there comes two woe more after hereafter. And the six angels sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the, of the golden altar, which is before God. And he says here, saying to the six angels, which the trumpets, loose four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates, and the four angels were loosed, and they were prepared an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay a third part of the world or a man. And so we see these things uh, as we read God's word are coming. And listen, the only thing that we can do is pray for our brethren and our sisters that uh, they will, the Lord will help them and encourage them and that they can live uh, in a way that, that, that is pleasing to the Lord. And that we can pray for our brethren and sisters that are gone straight. And listen, they're out there. Uh, they're saved, but they're going astray. Mm -hmm. and listen, they're going to suffer. They're going to suffer. And these things right here should be a warning to those that are not serving the Lord like they know they should. Mm -hmm. And people, it's going to be, uh, and, and, and you know, uh, to me, it, it, it looks like it's the, the beginning of the end. And, and I'm, not, I'm not here to say that the Lord is going to come back in the next 100,000 years. I don't know. But I know one thing, he's, to me, he's, he's showing that he's getting, he's getting things ready for the Antichrist. Now, the, all of these divisions, all of this turmoil that's going on in our country and in the world, he's got this man, all, I believe, already set up, and he's going to step in when the time is right, and he's going to say, hey, I've got an answer to your problems. And the people will gallop it up. Mm. <laughs> They're ready already. They're already, why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? Hey, he comes in and he says, hey, I've got a reason. I mean, I've got a, I got a solution for your problem. And he'll be accepted. And listen, you look on the TVs this, this past week, and these people that are of a religion and they're showing other people and they're showing on TV how they've got this black mark on their head. <laughs> people, it's, you know, that's the beginning of the end because one of these days, those that are left behind after the rapture are going to have to take that mark <laughs> or they're going to starve to death or be killed. And so... You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that, hey, that the times don't run and do this and do that, but I'm saying this, we need to keep our eyes open. Mm -hmm. We need to keep our eyes towards the, the state of Israel because there's where the happenings are going to happen. That's where God's last thing is going to be. That's where, that's the, that, that's the whole thing. And so take heed and uh, remember that uh, God can, can, he can, he can make it better for you if you, if, as long as you want to serve him. I, I believe that, I believe he's, he, he, he blesses those that serves him. But there's a time coming when people, people just will not, they're, they're that way already. Anything that's good for the flesh, hey, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. You tell them, hey, can you come to church? No, I gotta go to the boat. You want to hear anything about the word? No. I, I, if I want to hear it, I, I gotta, uh, something I'll turn on and listen to that. They, they don't want to hear it. Right. So that's the situation. And, and uh, 
I believe this is one of the things that Joel, of course, Joel tells about a lot of things that happened uh, since since the Lord came, and uh, so I believe this is some of the things that we need to hear this morning. So thank y'all for listening, and I hope that it's been something that you can carry with you and uh, think about when when these things arise, when when problems come in your life. Hey, get closer to the Lord. Amen. And and uh, He'll bless you. Thank y'all so much for listening.